The Bob It's Bobbing, I've got a shirt on. Welcome to your twice monthly feature length vlog. I'm going to start this week's vlog with a kind of 10 minute chatty daily face update, like makeup update, because I was watching through all of this footage for the vlog and I was like, you, you look quite good. I think the with the hair kind of finally doing what I want it to do and I've tweaked my makeup a little bit, started using a new lipstick, hint, hint. Um, I was like, yeah, I, I like what's going on here. I'm kind of pleased with how I'm looking. So I thought I'd talk through um, my updated Merit face because I'm still using a lot of Merit products, but I've introduced, uh, I've basically switched out a couple of colors um, with the kind of the graying of the skin over the winter months. I thought I should probably change out a few colors that were getting a little bit too warm for my face. Um, I think it's made a massive difference and I feel quite, um, I don't know, I just feel quite glowy at the moment, which is quite nice. Merit have launched a matte lipstick, which um, they're, they're basically kind of trying to redefine the, I guess, the misconception of a matte lipstick being drying and cakey. And actually the word, just the word matte normally sends me running in the opposite direction, especially as someone who was pretty much always got a lip balm either in the clutches of their hands or in their pocket. To now have replaced my lip balm with a matte lipstick, it's um, quite an achievement, but I will show you shortly why the, the lipstick is so nice. But yeah, I've just slightly changed some of the um, shades. So I've just, I've switched out my Minimalist to the colour cream. I use the Minimalist as a concealer, but you could use it as a, an all over base. It's very, very creamy, which is great at this time of year where I feel like my skin is um, just thirsty, thirsty for, for glow, you know? And Merit for me is, a very glow giving brand. By the way, I've just prepped my skin with their, their, their glow serum. <laughs> um, so I use this under the eyes with my fingers to just warm up the product when you sort of like press it into the skin. Then I've switched out the bronzing uh, balm to clay. I was using Sign. Again, it was just a little bit too warm toned. Clay is much more, um, if I just do a swipe, it's much more of a kind of neutral, I would say. And I quite like actually just putting it on the back of my hand like that and then dabbing the brush in because this allows me to kind of have a bit more control over how much I build it rather than applying it straight onto the face. But applying it straight onto the face still works. Um, I think just with like being a bit paler at the moment, I just want to build it up a bit more carefully. Oh, by the way, there will be, um, just like last time, there's discounts on some sets in the description box, um, which you can only get through those links, by the way. Um, so yeah, just warm up the face a bit with that. Do you know what, I'm actually just gonna take a little bit across the nose. I actually, so in the day, I actually quite like to take a little bit of this and just pop it like in the crease of my eye just to kind of add a little bit of definition there because I'm really into a no mascara look at the moment. I was back on mascara for a bit before Christmas, now I'm back off it again and this just adds a nice bit of um, definition to the eyelid. But in the evening, if I wanted to create more definition, I'm really liking um, mid-century in their uh, solo shadows which um, these are also matte but in a very creamy way they start off as a cream and then they, they dry down a little bit as a matte I'm actually just, I'll put it on just to show you do a swipe on my hand you can see there it's just like quite a good it's just a really good like neutral brown and again I would just in the evenings just to I guess add a bit more. Then I'm going to move on to the lipstick because I, I, I genuinely love this lipstick so much and for some like if you've watched for a while you know that I don't really wear a lipstick very often um, and if I do it's a colour that's just sort of like my lips but more saturated and I feel like I found this with um, the classic colour. So I've got two colours, I've got Antibes and Classic. So this one is uh, and to be, this one's classic. Classic is um, a bit more pink, 
and Tibby's is a bit more, it's a lot more kind of orangey toned. I actually saw Greta Lee recently wore Anne Tibby's and she looked so good in it. Okay, so classic for me is like my lips but a bit more oomph, you know? And yes, it's matte, but it's creamy. It's, it's hard to explain. And it creates a very sort of like blurred effect. And what I like about this is, obviously the texture, I don't feel like I need a lip liner, which is something I always felt like I needed with a matte lipstick because it would either just kind of eventually bleed or, I don't know, I guess my memory of a matte lipstick was very much like, it's got to be lined, you've got to get that sharp line. Whereas with this, because it's so creamy, you can just sort of like create this really nice blurred effect. I, oh man, I love this lipstick so much. And I love it even more without mascara, like keeping my eyes really bare and just wearing the lipstick. With the blush, I'm still using Beverly Hills. Love, love, love Beverly Hills as the everyday one. But have just started with Persimmon, which is a little bit more, well, it's a lot more red. Again, swipe that. But I think with this lipstick and just with like, I guess, feeling a little bit dull, <laughs> I quite like Persimmon at the moment because it, I think with the lipstick I can just sort of like rely on that lifting because it's got that pink and then with Persimmon it's just this really sort of like quite just subtle just pop but not in a pinky way you can see why this is not my actual full-time job doing makeup because I, I can't explain it in an actual articulated way <laughs> and then that's me good to go and I just feel like I mean it's a very grey day today because so it's not really doing a good job of highlighting it but I just feel like yeah, I just, I just feel quite good about myself and that's, that's okay to celebrate, isn't it? Thanks, Merit. So yeah, um, there will be links in the description box where you can click through and get some discounts on some bundles. Um, right, I'm going to go wash my hands and uh, enjoy the rest of the vlog. Guys, it is, um, it's 20 to 1, 20 to 1. I like to be in bed by 11 at the absolute latest. Um, so the grandma in me is not liking this, but I had a really nice evening. Went for dinner at a place called Resto Bar. Uh, fantastic pasta. If you like pasta, then I highly recommend Resto because pasta is their thing that's what they they do the most of and probably what they're best at and um yeah you know when the conversation's just flowing and you're just having a good time and then before you know it it's midnight um and it took me about half an hour to get back here from the city thankfully though it's not hair wash day and i don't have to be up hugely early tomorrow from half an hour onwards i've got a full-on day then i come back and have a bit of downtime. I'm going to play. Um, I bought the Nintendo Switch with me. I wasn't going to do that because I, I, I was like, I'm not. I'm, ne I'm not going to play the Switch. But I actually think it's going to be a great way to just kind of like shake any sort of like anxieties I've got, and also just kind of like, I guess, help me just switch off a little bit because obviously playing the Switch. I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy at the moment, by the way. Obsessed, like. I, I'm, I, I love it so much. Um, what was I saying? I love it so much. Um, but because I get so engrossed in that, and it's so far removed from like scrolling my phone or, you know, like kind of fashion week stuff, it instantly, my brain just has to switch into Hogwarts mode. 
and um, I have to pretend to be a wizard and I have to fight, you know, Ranrock and all of the poachers and, you know, I, you know, I have to I have my duty as a wizard. I am Ravenclaw, by the way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it just kind of like switches my brain out of any kind of like bad headspace or any, it shakes any anxieties like instantly. Right, I'm actually going to cleanse my face, have a tea and then go to bed. When I don't have a tripod, when I'm travelling, oh, I hope the exposure sorts itself out. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Yeah, when I'm travelling and I don't have a tripod, my creativity really knows no bounds. The camera's currently balanced on top of a kettle that's on top of my suitcase. Right, I'm going to quickly show you what I'm wearing today. I didn't get the opportunity yesterday because it was pretty foggy all day and the light in my room just wasn't, um, wasn't very bright. So while the sun's out, I thought I'll show you what I'm going to wear today. So I've got two shows today, um, and then I'm going to try grab some lunch after the second show. So I'll be out for like a few hours. Um, I've gone for a very Le Mer inspired look. I mean, it's made up of like three Le Mer pieces, so naturally it's going to feel very Le Mer. These are the Le Mer um, twist jeans. They are slightly different to the curved jeans. Um, they're not quite as long, and they come with a belt. And I'm wearing my Proenza glove boots because I want to just, I don't want to do like multiple turn ups on the jeans today because I kind of want to keep that like curved shape. And then Le Mer shirt, this is just one of their classic twist ones in a sort of like slightly sagey cream colour. I have no idea if this colourway is still available. The shirt will be because they do the shirt all the time, but they change the colourway season to season. And then headband, because at the moment I just don't really have the time to air dry my hair. So it's uh, just hiding it under this is way quicker and just easier. And then I'm probably just going to add like a nice earring and some rings. I've got this black trench coat from Scal. I need to actually steam everything because I've just noticed I'm quite crumpled. And then I've got thermals on as well, by the way, just in case you're wondering how on earth I think I'm going to get away with going outside in these cotton layers have got thermal top and leggings on, or tights on <laughs> and then the medium croissant because I'm going to be out for a good chunk of the day and I want to carry quite a bit with me and the medium croissant accommodates the amount of stuff I like to carry with me and yeah that is me for the day I just feel like this is like quite comfortable not overly like fashion but, like I said in last week's vlog, I just want to feel like myself. I know I said while I'm here I want to try lots of new places and not rely on what awful I think. 
<laughs> and not rely on the old faithfuls that I always go to when I'm here. And I have been trying new places. However, when I was walking back to my hotel yesterday, I noticed that Atelier September have opened up a new place next to the Aldo, um, which is where I'm staying. So they've got the, the, the new one, I say new, I think it opened up last spring in the city. And then they've opened up this other new one, which will look super cute and cozy, literally next door. Um, and I popped in and asked her if the menu was the same as the one in the city. And she said, no, they've actually got some different things. So I'm gonna go for breakfast this morning. Even though it's technically somewhere I've already been, I haven't actually been to this specific one, so I will be having something new. Um, and I've had breakfast at the Aldo for the last two mornings, and it's great, but I just thought I'll try something different. I'll have a change of scenery this morning, go there, and then it means I can come back here really easily. Do you know what? I don't actually think my hair really needs, this is day two, I don't think it really needs much doing to it. I might just put a bit of texturizer spray in it. Um, yeah, because I've I got to check out today and head to Villa, another hotel, um, for the remainder of my stay because um, the Aldo didn't have availability for my full trip. Um, I think I've spoken about Villa before. It's literally opposite the central station. You can see Tivoli out of some of the windows. Um, it's quite a big hotel. But it's got a great, great rooftop pool. And then I've got one show today, which is, I am anticipating this to be my favourite show of the week, um, because it's Mark Kenley, Domino Tan, and the brand always puts on a really beautiful show. Um, but the fashion week this week so far hasn't really like made me feel anything. It hasn't, I don't know, nothing's really excited me, which is a shame, because usually there's always two or three shows that really kind of like get me feeling excited and inspired, but I haven't really had that this season. Um, lots of things have sort of felt a bit flat, so I'm kind of banking on Mark Kenley to be a good one. Um, and then after that, I don't have anything, so I'm gonna go back to Villa, and I think it's just gonna be a room service night. I'm gonna use the pool, I'm gonna use the sauna, room service because I've been out three nights in a row and my social battery, does, I don't think I have it in me to, to go out again because it's just the, the continuous talking. I can't, I can't do it, she says here, rambling on. And I'm gonna play some Hogwarts Legacy this evening, get some quests finished um, and then yeah, recharge and then I can continue the socializing after that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go get some breakfast. Warm up your bed. And then you can see. Warm up on. You can see. I 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 can and I've stopped caring what I look like because I just want to be warm. Uh, so yeah, kind of a bit of a waste really, taking all the stuff I've brought with me because yeah, it has not been seen. Anyway, this is what I'm wearing today. Um, Almada label coat, really, really, really old acne scarf. Like, you know, when they used to just do the real classic like navy black, gray, red scarf. I don't even know if they still do these. Um, and I've just pinned it on the front here with the pin and then I've put a real long drape at the back hoping that the weight of that will keep it in place which I'm sure it will and then these 90% trousers which I think are going to be great in the summer you can kind of see they're quite thin you can see my socks through them um so I can't really wear them with a crop jacket at the moment it's far too cold so I'm just using them as like a kind of nice textural detail coming out the bottom of my coat and then um tabbies and I'm just going to take my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 um, and just lots of nice silver to really make things pop. I think I'm going to be pretty warm and cosy in this.
and just like that, I'm at Villa. From the Aldo to Villa, what a transition. I've just stuck my phone on the hotel window um, with that sticky thing. It's working quite well. Better than it did in the bathroom, which is probably due to the moisture. Right, Fashion Week is done. I didn't do a great job of documenting it because I feel sad to say this, but I didn't feel hugely inspired. Um, but I think that says more about me and what I kind of want from fashion at the moment. I really want to feel something, you know, I want to, I don't know what the feeling is, but I know it when I, I'll know it when I feel it. And I wasn't really getting that. There was lots of lovely stuff, but nothing that just like really excited me and, and inspired me. Um, which is a shame because I feel like for me, Copenhagen is one that always inspires me, but I don't know, something just was missing this time round. Anyway, the next couple of nights, I'm going to be doing some bits with Anne Tradition, whom I did talk about briefly way back in the summer when I came for three days of design. I've been doing some long term work with them, just sort of like creating content for them uh, with a few like new releases and launches. And this week, sorry, I'm drinking a cup of tea in this coat and I'm, I'm like overheating, but I'm prepping myself for how cold it's going to be outside. Anyway, they are launching garden furniture this week which is great timing because we are now starting to plan our garden. So, um, and we're going to incorporate some of the Anne Tradition stuff in our garden. So it's going to be great to see it in real life. Um, so yeah, just got a few bits, few events and um, to for the launch. But today is a free day until I have dinner with Anne Tradition tonight. So I'm just going to go out and about, catch up with some friends, grab some breakfast and some lunch. Just enjoy it while I'm here um, and enjoy it while I've got this free time as well. Um, what else do I have to say? Do you know what? I'm going to say this because I, I wasn't going to say it um, because I'm saving it. I'm saving more of this for a whole vlog. But yesterday we got our um, planning permission approved for our extension and I've not said a word about it. Uh, since we put the planning in in November because I didn't want to jinx it. I, I was getting really superstitious about it and I just wanted it to go through smoothly. Um, like I said, I will talk about this more in a vlog, in an actual like house dedicated vlog because I've been vlogging the process from November. So I'll do like a full kind of like timeline from like the moment we put planning in up until I guess we start the the messy demolition process and digging up the garden for it. Um, and it just feels, I feel really excited because of that. Now we can plan the garden. We've got the extension approved. It's like, I don't know. Now I know that this year is going to be a really good year and a fun year, a stressful year. Don't get me wrong, but a very fun year getting the house, um, getting this big, big part of the, the house done. Um, yeah, I'll show you all architectural plans and everything. Um, when, but it was, it was such a shame. It got approved yesterday and I'm here and Dean's at home. And I was like, oh, we can't really celebrate. So I just had like this little solo glass of champagne in my hotel room as a celebration. Um, because if you live in the UK and have been through this process, you will know that it can be a long process. Even if you're doing something really simple, like a really simple residential structure on the side of your house, even that can, can take a while and there can be a lot of back and forth with the planning um, office. So to finally have it approved, I'm like, oh, thank goodness it's done. Like, I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulders. I'm not checking my emails like every hour. Like, when is it gonna come through? When is it gonna come through? It's through. Anyway, I digress. I need to go and let the um, Copenhagen exploration and adventure continue.
like, wow, it's crisp today. Kind of regretting not wearing like a turtleneck. I think I have really nailed my air drying technique at the moment. Normally I would have to give my hair a good like five hours to dry naturally. I have still, it has still taken me three hours to get to this, but I, I mean, washing my hair three hours before I've got to leave was very risky, but I was like, I think I can do it. I don't like to use a hairdryer on my hair because it makes my hair go twice the size um, and the frizz is even more extreme and I don't really have any like blow drying tools here. Also, if I was to put hair dryer on my hair, it would end up drying quite straight and I want I wanted a, a wavy do for this evening. Um, so I've done a lot of towel drying and then I've been using the cold setting on the hairdryer in an attempt to just kind of stop the frizziness and I think it has helped but I also just need to shout out these two products. I don't have the JVN air dry cream with me at the moment because I've just run out. I've just ordered a new tube. Um, this spray from Way does a very similar job to the JVN cream. This just creates a little bit more of a kind of beachy texture. It doesn't have a salty um, uh, feel to it whatsoever, which a lot of salt sprays do. So this does the same thing as a salt spray without that salty feeling, which means I don't feel the need to wash my hair the day immediately after using this, whereas I do if I use a normal salt spray. Um, I would also say this is slightly better for isolating areas. Sometimes there's areas of my hair that say like, I just want the salt spray on the bottom section, um, or maybe on the top or whatever, this is easier to do that. Whereas with the cream, it's a little bit harder to kind of isolate areas. And then the Hershison's Almost Everything Cream, which is a product that so many people recommend to me, and I have it, <laughs> I've had it for ages. It is really, really good at, um, like once hair is dry, then kind of just using it to smooth out frizzy areas, bits that have gone a bit fluffy. I think I might just use it a bit around here this has actually dried okay. This is fully just on its own. Pretty pleased with this. Um, I will just use a little bit of, um, I've got this gross, uh, got to be powderful gel, which I use on my eyebrows, but I also use um, just in areas where I've kind of got like a lot of broken bits, which I do along the front here. So I get those hairs that just stick right up. So that just tames that. And then I will just brush a little bit through the crown where I've got some very short bits. Um, but what a success given I didn't have long. <laughs> I was quite unsure of like the dress code for tonight's dinner. I couldn't, I just couldn't tell, could not tell whatsoever. So I just went with all black, a nice mix of just like textures and shapes, not too, uh, like dressed up, but not in a way that's like a lot. In, in my opinion. Um, this is a really nice, I think it's a silk cotton blend shirt from Mark Henley Domino Tan from the collection that's about to come out. Um, and the material is kind of sheer, but not like overly sheer, like you can't tell at first that it's sheer. It's also quite dark, so you can't really tell. Um, but the fabric is quite stiff, um, almost feels like starchy, so it holds its shape really nicely. Not showing, it off very well. Also, didn't have I don't have time to steam, so it's a bit it's a bit wrinkled, but that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, really nice cuffs on here. They're they're quite big, so I've done a turn up so that it shows off my jewelry a bit more. Um, Casa Elion bag, and then Lee Studio bracelet, Lee Studio ring, flash jewelry earrings, uh, ro rohe rohe skirt, and then brown suede tabbies. I feel like I would like something around my waist, but I'm like, mm, you know, like a belt or something, but I'm actually just like, this, this is fine. Thank you. And would you look at that, I am back, cleansed, skincare on, now ready for a little bit of Hogwarts Legacy uh, and a chamomile tea. That was probably one of the most heartwarming and wholesome evenings I think I've ever had in Copenhagen. Um, the dinner was great. It was cooked by Anne Tradition's in-house chef and every course 
the chef introduced every course and in, and told us the inspiration behind the dish. And each dish was inspired by um, a story or a connection, like a story from or a connection to someone within the Anne Tradition team or like a designer on the team. And I thought that was really nice, a really nice way to connect the food back to the reason why we're here and back to the team behind the brand. So like, for example, the bread course was inspired by a bread that um, someone's grandmother used to make. You know, like really nice, heartwarming connections like that. Um, I am so full now, but every time I leave Copenhagen, I leave with a very full heart and a very full belly. <laughs> um, so absolutely no complaining from me. So yeah, I'm now going to have a chamomile tea and I'm going to play some of Hogwarts Legacy. I feel like, um, I think I'm now 70% way through the game. I finished all the main quests. So I'm doing like the remainder of the exploration and just finishing up all the side quests. I've loved it. I've absolutely loved Hogwarts Legacy. Um, and I think the next one I'm gonna get is Zelda, the most recent one. I don't actually know the actual name of the specific Zelda that I wanted to buy, but it it's like one of the most, it was like one of the most top rated games last year. And it seems like a very like self exploration. That's, I know that's not the technical term. Is it open world? You can tell I'm a bit new to the, the Nintendo Switch games or just games in general, but that's the type I quite like. Um, so, and I'm back in quite good time, which is nice. And then tomorrow morning, I've got quite a free morning. So I think I'm gonna grab breakfast here because the hotel breakfast like villa's breakfast is really good it's probably one of excuse me it's probably one of the biggest and best hotel breakfast buffets i've ever seen and then i'm gonna just there's two places i want to go there's two shops and i've just got to judge where they are and the whether i can hit them both before i need to come back here check out i reckon i can i reckon i got time Someone mentioned that um, Holly Go Lightly is having a closing down sale and like they're discounting like new season La Mer. So I'm like moth to a flame. Probably a very good job that that shop was closed and I don't have time to wait for it to open because I could see through the window. Oh, the sun is bright and I forgot my sunglasses. I can see through the window that pretty much every single lamp that sits on my wish list was in that shop. And I can't be buying lamps because A, how am, how am I getting them home? I've got the smallest little carry-on suitcase with me and B, can't afford it. <laughs> um, but they had like every Noguchi that I want and quite a few Ingo Moira ones that are difficult to find in the UK. Even now, I'm having to resist the temptation to actually just wait around until it opens, but I need to get back to the hotel and pack my case and check out. But yeah, that could have been a dangerous a dangerous shop visit. Okay, I've got 15 minutes until I need to check out. Um, so I'm just going to do a little makeup touch up and then zip up my case. What I really like about Villa is that the checkout time is 12. Most hotels it's 11. And that jump from 11 to 12 makes such a difference because it means I can still kind of like go out and explore for the morning and then come back knowing I can just like do a bit of a refresh in my room like maybe if I want to change into like my travel outfit or whatever. I don't know, I just really appreciate a midday checkout. It, ma it makes me feel like I've got a lot more time to explore in the morning. Anyway, I am obviously very sad to be leaving because it's Copenhagen. 
Um, but do you remember, was it last summer, the summer before, I had that very like emotional time at Louisiana because I, I like traveling solo. I like exploring a city on my own. But when I'm really, really having a good time, there is that, um, there is that yearn to like share it with someone. And although I've been seeing people here, at the end of the day, I would love to be able to share this time here in Copenhagen with Dean. Unfortunately, he is fitting a kitchen this week. <laughs> um, so it is kind of like having a great time, but like can't, you know, do wish he was here having a good time with me, but it's an incentive to come back um, and hopefully be back in the summer. Right, I have, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, do a little brow set with this absolutely minging old brow gel. And then that is me done. I use this like gross kind of, well, I say gross because I've had it for so long. It's like a, one of those Muji pouches. Also, why am I carrying four lip balms around with me? <laughs> They all kind of are different, I guess. This Mecca Cosmetica one is tinted and has an SPF in it. This is just a classic, the Lizzie Arden stick. Summer Fridays, if I want a bit of vanilla. And then I have the, <laughs> I have, these two are basically the same product, but they're just in different forms. Why am I like this? I love a lip balm and I love to have different lip balm options. <laughs> right, I'm running out of time. I must, I must check out. runs where it feels like everything is fighting against me. I've got a stitch, some sort of acid reflux as well, it's just making me feel gross. And I seem to have done something to the back of my right leg, like on my hamstring, which I think I did in Pilates, which is ironic because I'm trying to do Pilates to kind of improve my running. Um, and yeah, the playlist is just not doing it for me. I think I need to shake it up. I've not changed my running playlist for about a month. <sighs> So I forgot to mention, there was actually one additional um, New Year's, kind of like a New Year's resolution that I was setting myself. And that was that I was no longer tolerating uh, bad fitting clothes, you know, like clothes that don't fit me. And obviously that is subjective, but in just, I mean more in terms of like, just getting, just not tolerating things that are like a bit too long or don't quite fit in the waist because I used to be really good at going to the tailor. It was something I would do quite regularly and then just kind of got fell out of the habit of it and ended up with a pile of things to go to the tailor that just never went to the tailor and have just kind of sat unworn for months or was just wearing clothes that just didn't feel quite right. And already in the past couple of weeks, I've taken a few things just to like tweak little things, you know, like take things up slightly or just like pull things in um, on the back, or you know, like on the seat. And it makes such a difference. Like, uh, every time I go pick something up from the tailor and then put it back on again, I'm like, oh, this is why I go, because now my clothes fit me the way I want them to fit. Um, so I've just been stood in front of the mirror for far too long, trying to figure out if I want to take these to the tailor and get them shortened. They are the Le Mer twist jeans. Sorry, it's gone really dark all of a sudden, so you probably can't see a thing. They're the Le Mer twist jeans, and I've always been terrified of their jeans because they look really long, and they are pretty long. But then I see Sarah Lynn Tran and she, she must be what, 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five? and she wears Le Mer trousers so well. She really embraces the big turn up or the, or the slouch or just, she's very good with proportions basically. She, she, I just think she looks great in everything she wears. And I was like, right, I'm going to try them. 
based on her the, the theory of her being quite short. Um, but I don't think I like the turn up on me. I've just been trying them with heels, I've been trying them with flats, and I think because of the twist seam, that really nice like curve and line needs to sit quite smoothly and the turn up is kind of interrupting it and making it look a bit, I don't know, it just doesn't look quite right. I think the, the, the non-turn up still has a, a, like a nice little bit of slouch and then if I wear them with a flat they'll pull quite nicely but this way with a little block heel that's just a very nice, it's a nice shape going on there, a nice bit of elongation because um, I'm only 5'3", so I need, well, I don't need all the help I can get, but I appreciate the help, you know. I don't mind being short, but if something makes me look 5'5", five five, you know, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. Get them shortened just a little bit. And then the other thing I'm going to take to the tailor in my journey to no longer tolerate things that don't fit. I got these shorts last year from the row. I found them on sale on Farfetch. And the, they're elasticated, which is great, but the elastic is just, it just needs to be like pinched in a little bit more because it doesn't sit as kind of like in the waist as I want it to. So I'll just get him to open that up and just like pull the elastic a bit more. And then, oh, these were another sale find on Farfetch last week, actually. 70% off La Collection trousers. The last pair. Um, I had the brown ones and I love them. So when I saw these, I thought it's a no brainer because they, th these are lighter. They're a lighter weight wool, so they'll probably take me into spring summer more easily than the brown ones will. Um, but yeah, these are way too long. But they've got that same sort of like curve and um, drop crotch that these do. Right, I can see my uh, batch, uh, my memory cards flashing at me, so that's a sign to shut up and go to the tailor. Look how much I'm just blending into the sofa. <laughs> I've just got back from a full day in London and Dean's out for the evening. Uh, it's, it's been like really warm today unusually warm today so he's making the most of the warm weather and he's gone out skating and i am now deciding whether i want to sit and finish my book or chain watch four in a bed now four in a bed is a program that i am unsure if it has made it outside of the uk it could have and maybe has been remade in different countries but it's a very sorry my hand is like shaking trying to hold my phone up there we go that's better it's a very um it's a very like british tv show it's a very good example of like peak british passive aggressive behavior and when i explain the concept of the show to anyone which i was actually trying to do in copenhagen last week rather embarrassingly it doesn't really sound that good but i love it so four in a bed it, to anyone who does not know the concept of four in a bed um Basically, four sets of B and B owners go and stay in each other's B and Bs over the course of four days. Um, like they go as a group to each B and B, and at the end of each stay, they kind of fill out this feedback form, and then they uh, pop in an envelope the amount of money that they think the room or the the stay is worth. And they kind of like mark them on things like facilities, uh, hosting, breakfast. Um, how comfortable the beds were. I can't remember what the other one was. Um, and then at the end of the week, they just completely hash it out. So they all find out how much each other set of owners thought their B&B was worth. They get to discuss all the feedback. That's where things can get a bit heated, a bit catty. Um, it's it's funny because you just never know what the dynamic's going to be. Like sometimes everyone gets on and it's quite sweet. And then sometimes there'll be like one set of B&B owners who are quite like, they rub people up the wrong way and they get a bit strategic with things and treat it more as like a sort of game. Um, but it's always quite interesting because at the very end, everyone's like true colours come out and they, it can get a bit, yeah, a bit catty. Um, so yeah, it really doesn't sound like much, but I think I just find it quite comforting. It's, it's, it's a comfort watch. The, it's just endless. It's been on for years and years and years. So I can always find a, a week of it where I have like a season of it that I haven't watched. And it's just, I think because of the, how British it is, it's just quite funny. It just, 
there's so much of it that I just find really funny. And I think what I find the funniest part of it is the the level of scrutiny that these people put each other's B and B's under is wild. The things they will mark people down for is just crazy. Like they'll find I don't know, like the tiniest little maybe like crumb somewhere in the back of a chest of drawers or like they might find one singular hair on the carpet and it's like well that's a six out of ten for cleanliness then um yeah it's like that level of uh I guess almost pet pettiness as well anyway that I just chain watch that a lot when I'm (laughs) when I'm on my own um so it's like do I do that or do I read my book I I think I'm gonna just watch four in a bed you know Obviously, this is by no means a revelation, but the difference a bit of sun has made after probably one of the most relentless grey and wet weeks we've had all year. This feel like I'm on holiday. <laughs> Just had literally like a centimetre taken off and then slight some weight taken off out the back because it was looking a bit unbalanced due to regrowth and was looking quite heavy um, around the back and just sl- ever so slightly shortened at the back versus the front if you know what I mean um, and yeah it just feels so much fresher just that tiny little bit taken off um, and it's got a lot more bounce as you can see <laughs> Okay, as I sit here editing this and it gets closer and closer to the 50 minute mark, I think now is the time to stop and sign off. I hope you enjoyed this one. The next vlog will probably be um, at the end of the first week of March, I'm anticipating. And in that vlog, I will have a little bit of a focus on um, our extension intentions. So introduce that kind of more like properly so you can actually see what the extension will look like and what the purpose of the extension is and some of the things that we are doing to prepare the outside area for that extension. I'm in Paris next week so there'll be a little bit of Paris footage and then I'm hoping if the weather permits because it's been really sunny the past couple of days um, and if it continues I would love to have just some spring outfits within there. So until then I hope you're all doing well um, and yeah I'll see you then. Goodbye.